this video you first. You know, and I know what he's about to do. Comment below before this actual moment, <laughs> and guess what he's going to do? Subscribe to Jazzy and Steve. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video on Jazzy and Steve. This time it is for the match preview for Sunderland's home game, half kick kickoff on Saturday against Birmingham City at the Stadium of Light, as you see right here. Uh, this game's a pretty special one, especially for me um, and many others who I know who watch us as well, because it is the it's on Remembrance Day, November the 11th, and it's our Remembrance game. So there's going to be a lot of things going on, which I'll be part of, i.e. marching around the pitch before the game. And you might remember last year when I did the halftime entertainment. I'll put a clip in now. This year, I'm doing the half-time entertainment again. Yes. It's not its not going to be as crazy as the last one where I was half-inching kids and drumming, trying to put them in hospital. This one's a bit more chilled, but I'm still doing it. Oh, I cannot wait. It's going to be absolutely hilarious. We've also got the shirt giveaway as well, which will be... Um, basically, we'll be taking the video now. Who's won this Dortmund shirt? But we've also got... Which is about time, really. A Sunderland shirt to give away. We're giving away the, the weird one, the aluminous one, as my son calls it, a high viz. That's why he'll not get it. <laughs> yeah. He just doesn't like it. I can wear it at work. <laughs> you know, it's bright as <laughs> that. I like it, my like. But we'll be giving that away, so subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up on this video. It'd be much, much appreciated. Right, well, before we get started, we've got to obviously recap slightly, not much, recap oh. on the game away at Swansea, which yep. I reckon if we were still playing now, we still wouldn't be scoring. I totally agree. It was just nothing was good. 25 shots on goal, three on target. I mean, that's not good enough. No. But you've got to give credit where credit's due. Swansea defended like the lives depended on it, and their keeper was plucking saves out of his arse. I was like, wow. We done the live stream, and we both gave man of the match to their goalkeeper. Yeah. Well, our goalkeeper as well. Well, I thought Patterson was brilliant Patterson as well. Patterson was outstanding, obviously, saved the penalty. Um, but like you've got to give credit to Swansea. They were very organised, very disciplined. And as soon as the ten, the, the golden man sent off. It was one of them games where they just said, come break us down if you can. I reckon if, if, if they never got that man sent off, we would have won that game. Oh, 100%. 100%. Because they, they then wouldn't have defended with the nine outfield players and the keeper. They wouldn't have done it. Very early on, we had some really good chances. Obviously, Bruce and, like me, you're talking about, why did he not tack on his left peg? Dan Neil had a chance just over the bar and so did... Who else was it? And it just went away. Dan Neil, Ekwar. Then Dan Neil fluffed one inside the box. Aye. Rusin should have hit it with his left going across the keeper instead of trying to twist his body and then slip an hour. <laughs> uh, there was, look, there was a few things that just... I mean, Bradley Dack uh, had a good chance. He had two good chances. One where it bounced off uh, Luke O'Neill's chest and then how the keeper got that, I do oh, not know. He was amazing. That and then keeper. there was another one that Bradley Dack had where it just went wide. Um, but like I said, it was one of them games where... <laughs> We weren't going to score. No, nah. <laughs> we it just were. the Cardiff game. Listen, we, we spoke before about, the, about this game, and we put, like, yeah, did say you'd be happy with a point, and anyone would gone away from yeah, home. Yeah. But on the live stream, I says to you, you know, it would be, I'd be devastated if we didn't get all three points again. Yeah. But looking at it in hindsight, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Look at the Cardiff game, for instance. Yeah. You know what I mean? We lost well, yeah, that game. Yeah, it could game. have been. But I mean. It's like I said, before the game, I'd say, oh, look, you're always happy getting a point on the road, especially when Ben and Swansea were playing well at the time. Oh, but yeah. when, thir certain, when, certain things, <laughs> when certain things happen during the game, like a man getting sent off after 29 minutes, that's when you change your thing and you think, right, look, we have to win. And that tacks us on to now the negative things that I want to mention. It's only criticism. Listen, I think we're digging really well where we are at, at this moment in time in the season. Tony Mowbray, I, I was a bit... I, he, you know, some of his substitutes are puzzling us at the minute, Stephen. He's publicly criticising Hamia, publicly criticising about his um, professionalism. His professionalism, and then he brings him on. Like now, if you're going to punish a player, surely that sends out the wrong message by bringing him on. And especially when yeah. I thought Rusin was, it was just, it, it's going to happen for Rusin. I really do feel as if there's, there's a few goals in him. Like this yeah, season. definitely. I, I mean, I think we're not the only ones. I've seen a few of the posts on Facebook saying that uh, Morbi needs to sort out his. His interviews, uh, some of the things he's saying on his interviews, I mean, especially chewing down the microphone, but <laughs> like it, he is, he's criticising players. Aye. Like, like, well, just, like you've just mentioned there, Hemir for his professionalism. Uh, but then he's, and then he's, he's contradicting himself because he's saying Job needs a rest and then started him. Exactly, It's some of the things he's digging, like Ekwa. He, he, um, he, he mentioned something about Ekwa as well. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, he's one of our best players. You, yeah. know, you didn't start. Certain players, especially the, the, the way it is, this, the, the, the football it is this day has made, you cannot be too critical of players because I, they might tackle the wrong way. 
You know what they like, oh, they're wait, like, wait, not all of them, but they're, they're mostly like little lambs. Like, they they send mean things to me. Please. And then that, I, I didn't like to do this because I love them. You love them even more than I do. But Luke, oh, nine. My God. We've got to mention him, but after, listen, he's our captain. Now, he knows Dan Ballard is going to miss the Birmingham game. Could he not have hang, hung on for another couple of more minutes and not got himself sent off and put us in the position we'll find ourselves in? not sent off. Is, is, no, is, you know, fifth yellow. Yeah, second I know yellow card, mean. fifth yellow card, that's what I But mean. to be fair, what he got the yellow card for, I didn't think was was not anyway. Like, uh, but then you got But to be fair, he gave away the penalty. I think <laughs> what it was with, with Luke on Saturday, I think it was just too many things it is. where the, none of them were actual yellow card offences but if you add them all together then right. you, you know it's come I mean? a bit it's coming a bit of a problem with Luke though it's not as if he's like a, a nasty tackler or out like that it's just niggly he's, no, he's, he's just committed he needs to cover it out though when he's playing at centre half now because in the box we've noticed for quite a few times like over the weeks in the game yeah he's always he's nipping, away. And, he's nipping and pulling and Aye. pushing yeah it does it he does gets that. away with it well he didn't the other day yeah. and then Patterson bailed him out obviously but he's a captain now, he's got to um, show a bit more responsibility and leadership and digging things like that, it's just not setting a good example for the rest of them. It's, I'm seeing this as if he's an old player, he's not really old, is he? Well, he is in our squad. He is in our squad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that brings us on to Stephen, the captaincy. Obviously, Luke Wernine's missing, so... I think it's a, I think it's a dead cert who the captaincy's going to go to. I think it's going to go straight to Dan Neil. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, who do you think it's going to go to? Let us know. Let us know. Who you think should be the captain in the comment section below? He's, he's been doing everything right. So, wait, apart from when he got... Wait, to be fair, he got sent off for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if that was the case, I wouldn't, I'd never finish a frigging first half. <laughs> no. like, he didn't. I think Dan Neil will be the captain on Saturday. Um, I can't see who else it can be unless he's going to give it to Pritchard or Dak, but that, then he's got to start one of them. So... That's, that's funny, you know, when we were watching the stream and then Dak come on, uh, Pritchard, obviously you know what he's like, he, he does set the pace like with a press. Yeah. Where Dak, I thought it was, I don't know if he's still not fully fit, but he, he didn't. I think Dak, Dak, I think Dak did, well, no, I think, he did, well, if you think about it, two of the best chances we had in the second half was him. Aye. So he's getting uh, in the right places. He is, aye, because aye. I, I think, like I said, Saturday was just one of them games where it, we could have had freaking Haaland playing and we still wouldn't have scored. Aye, we wouldn't have you know what I mean? So, <laughs> oh, that brings us on to the dilemma we've got at the back. Me and you, oh, yeah. we've spoke about this off camera and we're both in agreements what he's more than likely going to yeah. be. I think if he, if he keeps four at the back, it'll be Huggins and Hume still on as the four backs and I think it'll be Sirkin and Sealed yep. um, at centre-halves. But with us being like this and the way Birmingham's playing at the minute, will he go three at the back? Which then I think it'll be Hume, Sealed and Sirkin. That screams hype, doesn't it? But to do that, you've then... Is it, you can't really drop Huggins at the minute. No. Um, but like I say, we can stand here and guess Mowbray's freaking thing all day long, but we'll find out on Saturday. But the thing is, Stephen, I don't think Mowbray, he'll, he'll play it our way. Yeah, if that, not, if he's that, not going to change things not, too much. He'll not, it, it, that, that doesn't mean, that, well, that means necessarily he'll not bring in Silt or try and support them together. I think he'll not worry about uh, what Birmingham's going to bring to the table. I think he'll just play it our way. And I think that that will be certain coming in. I think that, that's that's what Mowbray does. He, he, does he, he plays his way of football, and you know what I mean. He, he very rarely changes formation or things like that. So I think we'll probably as well keep the same formation, but I think it'll be certain and sealed at centre offs. Yeah, Birmingham on Saturday, Remembrance Day, mate. I was Remembrance Day, November the eleventh. Um, like I said, I'll be doing the march on the pitch before the game, so get in nice and early. Uh, it was good last year when I did it, and all you all crazy youngins were going, Steve, Steve, Steve. I felt like a wrestler coming down the ring, you're high fiving people and that. Um, but yeah, like I said, last year when I did the, uh, the half time entertainment, um, it, it went down well. Not with my body, it didn't because I was crippled at the end of it. But uh, uh, this, this year it's the crossbar challenge, and I've been asked to do it again. There's going to be two, two members of the rifles, two members of the MC. Are we the rifles? MCPC or whatever it is. The people who's, get, who's about to join the army and then two veterans. Okay. Uh, and it's myself and one of the... So... But I'm not very good at the crossbar challenge. So uh, <laughs> time, time will tell. Moving on to Birmingham, obviously, um, they've just obviously got a new manager. He's only been in now, what, four or five games? Four games. They're owned by Tom Brady? I think he's got connections. To, I don't know. To be fair, I'm not going to delve into that because I'm not 100% sure. I'm not, well, I'm not 100%. I don't but, think it's Tom Brady owns him. I think he might have some money involved in uh, it. Birmingham supporters, let us know in the comments if there's any watching, that is. Um, but I'm sure he's got something, some involvement in 
Birmingham City. Not 100%. I probably should have done more research before. Well, possibly should have. <laughs> but I, you've got, Apologies. Uh, Wayne Rooney's took over as a manager and he's got Ashley right. Cole and John O'Shea, who we all know very well. Um, and love. As the, uh, in, is the coaching staff. They've had four games so far this, uh, since they've come in. They've lost three and they've drew one. I mean, the last five, they've won one, lost three, drew one. Uh, the last game that was won, they drew against Ipswich, which is a good result, to be Aye. fair. Uh, I think Ipswich equalised in the injury time. Aye. So, um, uh, Ipswich scored an own goal and also given a little bit of a uh, yeah, you help, know. help and hand along the way. But uh, <laughs> they've got, they're still trying to find the feet, I think. Um, they are going to get a win eventually. Hopefully Aye. it's not on Saturday. They've only won one away game in the league this season. So that's got to board well for us. And even that was against a 10-man Bristol City. So they're not travelling well this season. We know we do travel well. The last two games um, put to one side. Mm-hmm. But um, it's, uh, we've got to go into this favourites, but I don't like going into the game as favourites. No. They're, they're missing a key part of the team. They're missing lots. They've got lots of... It's a bit like us. A bit like us. We're missing people through injuries, suspensions, international duties. They're missing... This is just a list that, that, that I found out. Chang, Buchanan, Anderson, Hall... Bielik and Tyler Roberts. So cool. they're missing all of them. So they are in a bit of a, you know, they're struggling for a squad, basically. Bit of a shit state, really. Um, like the, us, aren't we? Yeah, they have. I mean, they've won five, drew four, and lost six all season. Um, obviously, they're the 15th in the league, and they've scored 18 and conceded 19. So they've got minus one goal difference. So they're conceding, but not scoring, get loads. They do have some players, however, we, we do have to keep an eye on. Yeah. Uh, someone who nearly came to us, but he turned us down to go to Birmingham. Uh, not because, basically, it was for family reasons. He wanted to be closer to uh, closer to London. Uh, G.S. Stansfield. Um, there was well, obviously we were heavily linked with him. Uh, everyone thought he was. I remember on Facebook and all that was. Oh, Stansfield's in the academy. No, he wasn't. Um, he was at Birmingham's. Uh, he's got five goals so far this season. Uh, then I think a bit of a playmaker for them. You've got Koji Miyoshi. He's got scored two and he's got two assists. Sariki Dembele. They've got some right names there. That Dembele was good when he played for Peterborough. Like. Well, he's he's faster than a fast thing in Fastland. Ah, so we've got to keep rapid, an eye on him. Rapid. He's got three goals this season. They've got uh, Cody Cody Drama. He's got two assists and uh, someone who's been he's been kicking about for a long, long time is Lucas Jutkovic. Uh, he used to play for Burnley. Now he's obviously Birmingham. He's got two goals and one assist this season. And they've got a centre half, which we know none of our strikers that we've got know, but uh, Dion Sanderson. Uh, we know he's a good centre half. We know he's capable of uh, we've, uh, we've putting in good performances. We loved him. We wanted him. Oh, to we, sign we, him yeah, we, we, we he thoroughly enjoyed his year really with us. Like. We enjoyed having him, uh, but now he's playing for Birmingham and he's been playing quite well. Uh, not too well because I've conceded 19 goals, but it'll be good. It'll be um, it'll be quite interesting to see how Job plays against. He's obviously his former team. Well, we'll have to get on to Job in a bit because I don't think he's going to play. Do you think? He's I don't gonna... think he's going to play. Oh, right then. So we may as well quickly move on to Sunderland. And we, we might as well. We might, we as, well. might as well. Right, Sunderland. Look, right, obviously we <coughs> spoke about the Swansea game. Now, it wasn't for the one. For, what's the word? It wasn't for the one for try. And we like, we had plenty of shots. We just couldn't hit the target. They just weren't. The shots weren't going in the right in, direction. In the, right, like, in the net. But didn't he get us wrong? Listen, there, keep them made some. If we were playing saves. rugby, we would have stormed it. I <laughs> would have <laughs> tries all over the place. <laughs> but no, like. Going into this game, like you say, it's it's going to be very difficult for us considering we've got knee centre backs and well, we this, have, right, but just not over two. Not, not I don't think two he's going to play them. Is is. He? I think he play one of them. Well, I, I hope. Well, we both hope he does play a silt. Um, last season was a problem as well, Stephen, with not having any centre halves. Uh, towards the back end was towards one. The, the back end, end was season. really struggle. Which leads, I mean, it's still, well, why the hell did we get rid of Danny Bath? But that's, we're not going to get back onto that. I think we'll cover that plenty of times at the end of the transfer Aye. window. <laughs> uh, but look, there's a list of players at Sunderland's without this Saturday, as you are all aware. Luke 09 and Dan Ballard, both suspended because they're getting the fifth yellow cards, uh, both of them, against Swansea. Chrissy Riggs away on international duty. Um, his World Cup campaign for the under-17s starts to, uh, on Saturday. Hope he has a good campaign. I hope he does. Adjie Lise, Timothy Pembele. Uh, Jim and Tenney and Corey Evans are all still on the physios table. What the hell is... What's the crack with Pembele, really? Pembele, he's he done his ACL in March. So he's on like a... Basically, he's on his way back. But the, I think a week ago, Mowbray said he's still about four four weeks away. Why the hell did we bring a player in who's just done his ACL? Because he's mint. Aye, true, true. So they're thinking, right, <laughs> they're, thinking, they're obviously confident he's gonna, his, his recovery is going very well. I mean, he's full of energy. I remember when I met him down at the Beacon, and he was proper. I mean, he was—he was the one who had the most shots Aye. at the crossbar challenge when we did at the Beacon. Um, so he is getting there, and I, all the things I've seen about him, he's, he's going to be a hell of a player Positive for us. Eye. So.
I mean, like, well, I think we've already said who we think is going to uh, play at the back. Right. Uh, but like I say, <laughs> more beer's choice. More um, choice. I, I mean, I know he watches our videos. Hi, Tony. Yes, um, but, Tony, uh, You know, it's up to him what he does. And obviously, we, we've got to trust him what he goes for. Uh, another two players that I think we need to mention is Mayanda. Is He's back from injury now. He's been getting uh, integrated with the first team. But the fact that we've got three strikers, we've got two on the bench. He's been starting Russo and we've got two on the bench and he's not really using them. Or they're not doing anything. So does Mayanda come in? Does he get a spot on the bench? Well, i tell um, you what, Stephen. If he sacrifices Hamia, Hamia's spot on the bench for Mayanda... I will be gutted for me. Like, that that will be a, a harsh thing to do, considering the way he's publicly criticised them. Then he's given minutes yeah. against Swansea. Then he's going to drop him off the bench for... I'm not saying he's going to do it, Jesus. Oh, no, we didn't. No, he, might, he might still be integrated because he is still in. He's still, he still only played 190 minutes for, for, since his injury. So he might want to get more minutes in the squad. But he's, it's something that... When we travel to Swansea, so it's something that it's just to think about, basically. It, it, will he be involved? Will he not? Um, time will tell. Time will tell. And, and I mentioned it briefly before, but Job Bellingham, Love him. And for me, he's got to start. However, Mowbray said he's not fit. And if he's not fit, he well, you know, sorry, he is fit, but he needs a rest. Mm. And it's against his old team. He's a Blues fan. He's Blues through and through. If, if he's not 100% because he needs a rest, does he risk him? Does he go with um, Dak or Pritchard in the number 10 role? It's one of them. We don't know. He's, he's, he's openly said he needs, he needs a rest. But then he started them against Swansea when he said well, that. Then he started them against Swansea, but he pulled them off after 65 minutes he's or 60 minutes. He's done that quite a few minutes. times. Um, he's done that down at Leicester as well. He pulled them off about 60 odd minutes. So I don't know if that's just Mowbray uh, worrying about burning that out, so he's bringing them off early. Yeah. Or, like you says, he, he thinks he's I mean, you'd like that. Rest. Going by this season so far, you'd expect Mo uh, Job to start because Mowbray oh, loves him. Oh, either of them, he's, I think he's brilliant. Um, but. It's, it's going to be a tough one because, because he is only just turned 18 and obviously he's a Blues fan through. The, I know it's, it's football, you've got to be professional and you've got to do the job. Right. Um, so well, for that, for that exact him. reason, Stephen, I think he's 100% going to start him because he, he'll want to... Yeah. He'll, basically, he'll, he'll want to piss the Blues fans will, off even more because he pissed them off when he left them. I, they understood sense, why. But then they are, a lot of, quite a few of them said he's shit and he's not as good as what he's made out to be. So Ah, uh, yeah. I think that was just bitterness, to be fair, though. Yeah. A few, listen, we're not putting them, no, tying them all over the same brush here because it's only a few, uh, probably be faceless accounts like you get on yeah. social media and that, but, you know, he'll he, he be itching to start this game, I can only imagine. Pro I, I, I'd imagine it will be, because yeah, he'll know everyone who's there, apart from obviously the signings that came in in the summer. Aye. Uh, it's like when you play against your mates, you always try and do them out, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? that. So I, I, I tell you what, Stephen, we'll go for a quick guess at the lineup. We haven't done this for a while, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Wait, well, I, th I think we. Go on then. I'll go and beat. I'll see you. Obviously, Clark, Rusin, Roberts. Uh, Barr is. It, you know, it's touch and go between Roberts and Barr because simply um, Roberts' output, like goals wise, is just. It's, he's not he's not matching Clark now. Right? He nah. really is. He, he's actually he hasn't scored on us. So you, you can understand if Barr gets in there. But, um, uh, but I think he loves Roberts. No, no, Roberts but, is. Well, I mean, if, when we did the. Uh, well, not we didn't. When <laughs> uh, O'Neill and Hume did the. Uh, did the uh, questions, quick fire aye, aye, aye. teammates questions, and they said, who's the teacher's pet? And they both said, Roberts. Aye, well, that's, that's <laughs> you know right. what I mean? And then I'd probably have uh, Bellingham, and then Dan Neil and Equa in the midfield. Then this is where it gets a bit uh, funny for me, well, and you. Well, I think we've, we've said it before, didn't we? Uh, it's, uh, we're both in agreement, we think Silt will come in, um, then you'll go on Hume obviously on the right, Huggins on the left, and then it'll probably be Sirkin yeah. as well. I, I agree with that. I agree with yeah, that. We all know that Hume can play a centre half, he's done it before, but so can Sirkin and obviously Pat Lowe. I, I think that's what it'll be. I think I do think that's what it'll be. Mm. Um, I think Huggins will be on a high. But I wouldn't mind seeing Hume and Huggins swapping over every now and again because Huggins is naturally a freaking right back. Ah, he is. So, and when that game he did play right back was the game he scored that big ah, messy ass goal. You and know it, what got, I mean? it got goal of the month. Did it? Aye. Oh, very happy days. And another thing, I'll quickly... Was, I, um, I didn't watch now, mate. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> Doesn't even do me. She just rocks up and like, are you fucking... I just, I just, just, just <laughs> wing it. That takes us on to score predictions. I'm going first, because you always gone first. Or even when we kind of do the videos together, we always post this video you first. You know, and I know what he's about to do. Comment below before this actual moment. <laughs> and guess what he's going to do? I think it's going to be... <laughs> the old favourite. Sunderland 3, Birmingham 1. I've took a lot of time thinking about this scoreline, and that's what I'm going for. Do you know what? I've got a, I've got a, if you didn't see it, I would have been 3-1. Like, <laughs> I've got a funny feeling. Um, I'm going to go for 
obviously because the both teams have got problems with injuries. Um, kind of, kind of say this us keeping the clean sheet for obvious reasons. But actually, no. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going Sunderland two, Birmingham nil. Another clean sheet. I, 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 I hope you're right. I, I hope well. you're right. You know what I mean. But I just think Jay Stanfield's going to score. Because he turned us down and got to Birmingham. I just think it's written in the, the, that he's going to score. Well, uh, like you said, that have a one in five and then upset Sunderland. It's always the same. Uh, now, Stephen, we're going to be giving away the shirt. I'll be two seconds. You know, when you went up there, I just stayed perfectly still, so it looks as though he's paused. <laughs> he's not coming on camera because he's grown a mullet and it looks really shit. <laughs> I find that my son, even my son Niall, he's going to mullet and that looks shit as well. <laughs> I keep on telling him that it's not the 70s and you're not a friggin' yokel from friggin' the oh. deliverance. <laughs> Shake the hat about. He's not coming on, like I say, because he's mullet shit. Your son's so got a mullet? Aye, and my son's mullet shit as well. <laughs> right. Um, the winner is of the Bruce Dortmund strip by Lou Soccer is Jamie McCoy. Get in touch. Via Twitter or Instagram. Jamie Mc... Where, where's the camera? There it is. Jamie McCoy. Right, Stephen, I'm going to have to quickly pause this video so I can get my cap back. Right, so, Bruce Dortmund top has been won by Jamie McCoy. Congratulations, get in touch with Paul and we'll sort out getting you a strip. Um, obviously, as you know, the shirt was donated by loosesoccer.com. Um, get on the link, it's in the description. It'll also come up here. Oh, I want to do the Benitez. You ever seen this guy's posting? Benitez goes like that. Aye. I want, I want you to do it to when I go like that. It comes on. Right, I'll try. This is, we're going to test see, his. See, we're going to test his end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one's the Bruce Dortmund top. Like loosesoccer.com. The, the, the link's in the description. Click on that link, and you can get five pound discount on any top you want. Um, obviously, through us. And um, you're welcome. Um, yeah. And they've also sent us another shirt, which is the High Vis Sunderland away shirt, uh, which we will be giving away in due course. Yep. So make sure you subscribe, because it's the only way you're getting it. If you're not subscribed, you're not getting it. No, you're not. So that's about it for today's video, Stephen. Obviously, we're going to be at the match. I don't know if, if we're big an early kickoff. If we'll be at the statue, if we are, we will be because I've got to be. Oh, I've got to be at the statue for eleven o'clock. Oh well, we so are. We I'll are. be there. I'll be wearing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going all. Well, I'm wearing me. I'm wearing me. Like, well, like I was last year, I'll have my jacket on, my medals, and my berry. Uh, but because I'm doing the crossbar challenge at half time, I'll be wearing comfy boots and not my shoes. Yep. So. I'll still be there. Thanks. If you want to come and see us, come and have a, come and see us beforehand. Um, I, I don't know what time I'll be going in the ground because I don't know what time I've got to go in. Uh, but we'll be at the statue from about quarter to 11, 11 o'clock. Um, come and have a bit crack. We'll get you on the channel if you want to get on. Uh, and hopefully we'll get three points against oh. the, 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 the Broomies. We desperately need three points to try and catch up to the top. The top, I'd say uh, maybe the top four or five. Like it's starting to lead and Southampton are starting to like. You know, I put some decent points on the board, and we need we need we need three points basically. Well, yeah, we do. But like I say, there's still a long, long way. Well, to go, a long yes. way to go. That's about it. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Oh, that.